Welcome to Black History Makers, where we share the stories of modern day legal pioneers whose life's work will undoubtedly forever change the course of history. So Mocha, I appreciate you coming and, and yeah. sitting down with us. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you for having me. No, my pleasure. So, uh, you know, we talked to you a little bit about what we're doing here with the Black History Makers segment. Uh, so it's an opportunity to just kind of sit down and, and, and get to know you and share your story. So I came to law school and I had no intentions on working in corporate America. I had no intentions on being a corporate lawyer. It really just never crossed my mind, right? I always wanted to do some sort of public interest work or uh, something tied to community. It was a challenge to be like, hey, what's more important? The money, the prestige, or your purpose, your ability to help people, what you really want to do, your own happiness. Um, and I had to... I had to have that tough conversation with myself and say, my happiness is more important. My impact, my care, and my passion for community, for the liberation of our people is more important than this job, the individual success, and the millions it can get me. Um, and I'm willing to sacrifice that all to build something that I think is going to be beneficial, not only just for myself, but for our community as a, as a whole. Um, and so in the height of the murder of Jalen Walker, in the height of being denied opportunity to try to get back to my community via the civilian review board, I just kind of said, F it. <laughs> I'm, I want to do something different. Um, I want to take more control over my practice, over my ability to be in the community. And to me, that looked like starting my own law firm. It looked like teaming up with the Freedom Block, organizers, people who have already built deep relationships with, to create something and build something that is going to, I hope, be legendary for our community, invite people in and, and show people that it's possible. Believe in yourself. If you build it, people will come. Uh, but there came a point where yeah. you, know, you, you felt that despite the experiences and, and what it was able to do for you, uh, there was so much more, right? <laughs> there, and not, not, not just more out there, but there was more for you to do. I started my own law firm, and it has grown into something I could never have imagined. Um, I'm doing work that I never thought I'd be able to do so early in my career. I feel like I'm living that law and order dream that that 10 year old Emo Kai wanted to live. Um, I just finished a jury trial yesterday, right? My first jury trial, we won. Wow. Um, and it was, it was impactful, right? Um, it's a, a client I'm representing was beat up by the police department here in Akron uh, last summer, uh, reached out to me um, and we've been helping him through that. And after he got beat up, they charged him with resisting arrest. Um, and so we had to deal with that resisting arrest charge and we took it to a jury, that jury found that they did in fact use excessive force, that he's not guilty of resisting arrest. Uh, what's put us in a great position to now see the city and the police officers for that harm. How do you feel that, that you're, you'd like to continue to make an impact? This is just year one, you're just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but where would you like to see this thing go? Um, I really like to see the sort of programs and the initiatives be built out. Um, and I'd love to see more people come in because one thing that I know is that we're not going to get to this sense of freedom and liberation by ourselves and that we need community. We have to do this thing together. And so what we do here at the Freedom Block, what I do at my law firm is we're organizers. We organize this thing for ourselves and for the community. Um, and so what I'd like to see in the future is, you know, building out the law firm building out the nonprofit law firm. You know, I, I bought a bus and we're starting a mobile legal clinic and I'd love to see wow. that develop, right? And we can have multiple buses and we can have, you know, grow the sort of nonprofit arm. I started a food program with some other organizers and we really would love to see that food program grow out, right? Uh, you know, every distribution, we're feeding over 100 families in the city of Akron, giving out over 10,000 pounds of food each time. Um, and it takes so little economically for us to be able to do that. And the impact is so huge. And so my challenge to people is always, oftentimes that I don't necessarily need you to, or want you to help me. I want you to help yourself for the benefit of community. And I know that you are helping yourself, feeding into yourself and seeking liberation for yourself. We all get there together. I love that. Hey, just come come to the table. We're going to figure it out. Come to the table. Come to the table. We always have. I love we that. Always have, we always have figured it out. I love that. And Mokai Polo. So thank you, <laughs> Mokai, for, for sitting down and sharing your story. Um, you know, as, as we talk you know, through Black History Month, you know, we think about historical figures uh, and folks who have made an impact just through their works, through the way in which they live their lives, how they spent their time, how they gave back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, folks like you are, are living it day in and day out. So I'd like to say thank you for, for, for not only sitting, <laughs> sitting down with us, but thank you for, for doing what you do. Um, 
you know, and, and I'm excited to continue to, to, to see what happens and do my part to support, <laughs> right? Uh, support, uh, obviously, the community building that we're, that we're doing. So, so thank you. Thank you. One, one question we uh, we ask everybody um, before before we uh, we let them go. Was there one particular uh, figure in, uh, in black history that, that mm. is, is particularly special to you or has, has served uh, you know, a degree of importance when, uh, you know, when you were making your decision, not only to become a, law, a lawyer, start a law firm, but maybe some of your, your organizing work, or someone that yeah. you draw inspiration from? Yeah, um, that's a good question. <laughs> I think one of the people I definitely draw a lot of inspiration from is Huey P. Newton. Huey P. Newton, people don't know, was a lawyer and a founder of the Black Panther Party, co-founder of the Black Panther Party with Bobby Seale. Um, and when I think about freedom, I think in order to achieve freedom, you need cooperation, perseverance, and courage. And that is exemplified in Huey P. Newton and what he has built with the Black Panther Party and what they were able to do. He sought out for his own freedom, right? And he brought people in to collectively do that together for not just himself, but for everyone, right? Um, he used his law degree in a very unique way, right? He was an organizer at the same time while being a lawyer. Um, and he was able to have so much impact and building his own leadership. You know, he's not a perfect individual. And I don't think anybody is perfect. Um, and he had his challenges, certainly. Uh, but what he was able to sort of co-create that being the Black Panther Party was one of the most dynamic things that has happened in this country black folks. I appreciate you, Mokai, and I really enjoyed sitting down and doing it. Thanks for your time. Thanks, mm -hmm. thanks for sharing your story with, with, with everybody else and, and keep doing what you're doing and keep making history. Right on, right on. I appreciate that. I appreciate thanks. it. <laughs> because in every city, in every case, in every courtroom, and in every heart, the story continues black history makers.